Republican Congressman Mike Garcia recently traveled to the region to get a sense of the situation on the ground. He joins us live tonight. Congressman, welcome back to the show, and good to have you back in Santa Clarita. It's good to be back home. Uh, thanks for having me, Alex. All right, so take us through this trip. You went to places like Poland. You went uh, nearby to other countries. You went to the border with Ukraine. What did you see on the ground, and how is it different maybe from just what you see in terms of reports? Some powerful images, and, and, and actually the media has been covering this pretty well. It's been a good force multiplier for what's actually happening in the Ukraine. But to see it firsthand was extremely powerful, especially during these historic moments. Uh, we saw very proud uh, refugees, very strong Ukrainians coming across the border in Poland as well as in Romania. We saw strong allies in the form of uh, Poland and Romania helping to get uh, significant military equipment into the Ukraine. Uh, and we visited with NATO forces as well as American forces who stand ready uh, within, the, within the borders of Romania and Poland to act as sort of an, an iron curtain to enforce the Article 5 auspices under NATO. And I went there as, a, as an appropriator. I went there as a co-chair of the China task force to, to make sure that the money that we've authorized and appropriated in support of Ukraine, up to $13 billion in military equipment, is getting to the right people, getting to the war fighters at the front lines, uh, but also helping to make sure that the humanitarian aid is getting to the, civ the civilians who are being held siege by Putin. Uh, and as the, the chair of the, uh, the China task force, looking at ways to prevent this from happening uh, in Taiwan relative to China. And, and, and Taiwan, as you know, is very vulnerable to a similar circumstance. And, and my, my takeaway from all of this is that we should have pulled as many of these levers that we've pulled in the last eight weeks, we should have pulled these levers back in December and early January. Had we done that, had we, had we applied the sanctions, had we put the, the military equipment in place as a deterrence, we may have actually avoided uh, a shooting war in the Ukraine. And, and now we have to be looking at that through uh, the lens of now Taiwan relative to China in that regard. So very powerful scenes, and we, we've got to do everything we can to support the Ukrainians, short of putting American troops uh, in harm's way. And, uh, uh, it, you know, they're, they're fighting like hell, Alex. They, they, they are living uh, Patrick Henry's uh, give me liberty or give me death, and they're certainly going to uh, achieve one of those, and, and I think they have the resolve and they have the resources uh, to actually win this war against Russia. Well, we know that Zelensky is asking for a no-fly zone for America to help with that. You're a former fighter pilot. You're the kind of person that would have been out there patrolling on a no-fly zone. You know a thing or two about what that involves, and what that would involve yeah. would essentially be shooting down Russian planes. Uh, you, you don't think that that's a, a good play right now for the U.S.? And, and what do you say to Zelensky who says, we need this, we're dying without it? Well, and Zelensky has been shooting down Russian planes. Uh, the Russians, in fact, have been shooting down Russian planes on accident, uh, from what we've been hearing. Look, it's a bit of a misnomer. You don't create no-fly zones over your own territory. This would be like us being invaded by Canada and saying that we're going to establish a no-fly zone over Montana and North Dakota. We don't, we don't do that. We protect our sovereign airspace. And Zelensky has that right to protect his sovereign airspace uh, and to do so with whatever forces uh, he has at his disposal. The problem both Ukraine and Russia have is they have very sophisticated surface-to-air weapons. And literally anything that takes off right now is a target rather than being a shooter. Whether it's a MiG-29 or an SU-34, an advanced aircraft, uh, as soon as they get airborne over the Ukraine, they're effectively targets by either the Ukrainian S-300s or the Russian S-400s. These are very advanced uh, surface-to-air missiles uh, that are very formidable, even against uh, American air assets. So. Uh, yes, I'd like to. I'd like to be able to provide a, 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 a no-fly zone over Ukraine, uh, but to do that requires uh, us, the United States and NATO, deploying other assets that would effectively help take down their integrated air defense system, uh, and that that's uh, escalatory in nature. And I, I, you know, I don't. I don't believe that it's off the table. It shouldn't be off the table, but we shouldn't be talking about it publicly uh, from the Biden administration. And, I, and I'll, I'll leave you with this. Uh, it, it's, it's what we don't do that provokes Putin, right? It's, it's not what we do that we should be fearing escalation. Uh, we fear escalating uh, through measures that Putin is actually taking against the Ukrainians and, and some of its allies already. Uh, but it's what we don't do. And, 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 and pulling back our forces, pulling back our assistance, uh, and, and not putting uh, assets in the right places to create a meaningful deterrence around the Ukraine uh, is actually what will uh, provoke uh, Putin from, from going beyond even the Ukraine like, like to other nations like Moldova, et cetera. Uh, so we have to be paying attention yeah. to this. And like I said at the beginning, uh, th there's, this has an application to Taiwan right now uh, that is very vulnerable, and, and Chairman Xi of China is watching this very closely. Yeah. Well, Congressman Mike Garcia, thank you so much um, for sharing your perspective. We really appreciate it. And again, glad that you're back home safe. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it.